we continue our look at the book of Ephesians or the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians. And as Paul is trying to help pastor this group of people, they're struggling with uh, divisions, not divisions in terms of politics, but in terms of background and ethnicity and culture. And they want to know essentially who's in and who is out, uh, who belongs, who doesn't belong. And it's a question we all struggle with as well. So let's see what we can learn from the Apostle Paul. This is Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ, a prisoner of Christ, Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it, it, as it now has been revealed to his holy apostles uh, and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The Jews had been given this great trust of the covenants of God, the grace of God. And some were wondering, do, 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 they, do outsiders, Gentiles, non-Jews need to become Jewish uh, in order to be inheritors of the promise in Christ? And Paul is saying they are fellow heirs. They're not outsiders. They belong. I want to tell a brief story uh, about something I read a, a little little bit ago in the, in a scientific journal, and it was about robots and artificial intelligence. And did you know that robots, it seems, are becoming racist? Uh, in a sense, this is true, or at least they're in danger of becoming racist. L listen to a, uh, an article by Sean Keach. Um, he writes, artificial intelligence experts perform thousands of simulations on robot brains, revealing how they split off into groups and treat outsiders differently. The study published in, Sci in Scientific Reports showed that virtual simulated robots would shun others, forming their own groups. The experiment involved a give and take system where robots could choose which of their peers to donate to. As the virtual game unfolded, individual robots learned new donation strategies by copying other robots to benefit themselves. The study found that robots would donate to each other within small groups, denying outsiders to improve their own takings. Our simulations show that prejudice is a powerful force of nature, and through evolution, it can easily become incentivized in virtual populations to the detriment of wider connect connectivity with others. Uh, the study uh, explained further how learning these prejudicial behaviors didn't require a lot of mental power. Instead, it was simply a matter of copying others based on their give and take game success, which inevitably led to prejudice. Uh, Cardiff University noted that robots risk exhibiting prejudice like racism and sexism. Um, here's what I find kind of scary about this experiment. The scientists who programmed these robots uh, most likely thought of themselves as enlightened and unbiased, and yet their inherent understanding of the world led them to embed in the programming um, these values of give and take that led to exclusionary uh, behavior, led to prejudice, the shunning of outsiders, it just comes so naturally to us. And that self-centeredness can lead not simply to a shunning, but to a cruelty, maybe even a brutality. Um, it's fascinating. Now, I don't like them describing it as a force of nature. Uh, I think of it as uh, part of the human condition, but our condition has fallen. 
we're bent to think of ourselves first. And as much as we try to weed it out of our systems, and sometimes we simply blame our systems, ooh, it is embedded deeply in us. And we need to recognize it and repent and reject it. Why? Because God's love is not exclusionary. He doesn't have an in-group and an out-group. He offers his love to all. And we need to be the same way. Um, there are those that we think of as different from us. Uh, and we want to shun them. The Lord doesn't do that. We need to receive them because, as Paul says, they are fellow heirs of God's promise. Now we can talk about how they react to that promise and that offer, whether they accept it or reject it. But the Lord has no prejudice in him. He plays no favorites. And if we receive his love, it's only right and good for us to be the same way. I pray that we all have the strength to do that this week. Blessings on you all.